Hey guys, welcome back. This look was inspired by my friend Lacey who does mermaid makeup on a regular basis for an organization called Project Mermaids. They help raise awareness for ocean conservation by photographing celebrities dressed up as mermaids. So their website has a ton of great inspiration if you need it. So I'll definitely make sure to include all their information down in the description box below. But for now, let's get started on this tutorial. To create a super glowy, almost wet looking complexion, I'm mixing in the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal into my Kogan Doe foundation and then mixing it together on the back of my hand using a concealer brush and then applying it to my skin and blending it out with a beauty blender. You're also going to want to mix that Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector into your under eye concealer and whatever concealer you're going to be using to highlight. In this case, I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer to give that ultimate glow. I know it looks like I'm applying a lot of product to my skin right now, but a majority of what I'm applying is the illuminator in comparison to how much concealer I actually used. Because I used such creamy products underneath the eye, I'm just setting that area with powder to prevent any creasing. To prime my eyes for shadow, I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier Eye Basics Shadow Primer in Cotton. The color is really comparable to MAC Soft Ochre, but the texture is a lot lighter. Before applying my shadow, I'm going to fill in my brows using the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in Chocolate. But now that I'm watching this footage, I kind of wish I would have filled in my brows with a blue or green shadow to match the rest of the look. So definitely feel free to incorporate that when recreating this look. To really make the shadows pop, I'm going to start by applying the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in electric blue closest to the lash line. Before that cream shadow has a chance to set, I'm just going to blend it out towards my crease and then do the same to the other side. The first shadow I'm going to be using is Mermaid, so perfect for this look, by NYX. It's one of their prismatic eyeshadows, and I'm going to be packing that on on top of the cream shadow stick using Smith Brush 235. I'm also going to be using the NYX Avant Pop eyeshadow palette to complete the rest of the look. So I'm going to start first by applying the emerald green shadow to my outer crease using Smith Brush 247 and really focus on pulling that eyeshadow out towards the hairline, almost like in a V shape. Using the Sigma E40 brush, I'm gonna start blending those eyeshadows together and also further pull that shadow out towards the hairline. This next product is what I believe really makes this entire look. It's the Makeup Forever Star Powder in White Turquoise, or you know, number 944. And I'm gonna be applying this all over my face but for now I'm applying it to the tear duct using Smith Brush 230 and definitely don't hesitate to blend this powder up all the way to the brow bone. Again I'm going to apply that emerald green shadow to my lower lash line using Smith Brush 230 and don't forget to also wing out this lower shadow out towards the hairline. Using a large powder brush, I'm going to set my entire face with the Cover Effects Illuminating Setting Powder so that I don't lose any of that luminosity. And doing this is also going to make it a lot easier to blend out any color that we add to the skin. And now for the really fun part, we're going to go back in with that Make It Forever Star Powder and start applying it all over our face. Well, not really. We're going to apply it to the high points of our face exactly like you would a highlighter and I'm going to do that using Smith Brush 112. I decided to highlight first because I wanted whatever star powder was left over on the brush to transfer onto the rest of my skin when contouring. For a contour, I'm going to be using that same emerald green shadow from the NYX Avant Pop palette and Smith Brush 112. Just like I did with the highlighter, you're going to apply it to the areas that you would normally contour, except you're going to exaggerate it a little more and drag it out further towards the center of the face rather than keeping it really tight along the contoured areas of the face.
Because this is a highly pigmented eyeshadow, if you find it difficult to blend out, feel free to use a powder. I'm using the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Light Plus and Smith Brush 112 to help me soften up any of the harsh lines. I'm going to be using this lime green shadow as my blush and I'm going to be applying it using Smith Brush 112. The reason I'm using the same brush over and over again is because I really want the colors to blend together really seamlessly so it's okay if some of the leftover color from what you previously applied is on the brush. And then I'm also going to use that lime green shadow to contour my nose and I'm going to be using the Sigma E40 brush to do that. After all the highlighting and contouring was done, I just went ahead and started blending all the colors together. Once I was done blending, I realized I forgot to highlight my cupid's bow, so I just went in with some more star powder to highlight that area. Using the Sigma F05 brush, I mixed together the emerald green and the lime green together and just started applying it down my neck, collarbones, and shoulders for an added effect. I really wanted the scales to stand out in these areas, so rather than completely covering myself in green, I kept it pretty light. To create the scales, you're going to need some fishnet stockings. I got these for 4 bucks at the Halloween store. And start with a pretty small fishnet because we are going to be stretching it out. Stretch open those fishnets as if you were about to put your legs to them, but instead, put it over your head. If you have bad eyesight like me, this makes it really difficult to see anything, so just cut a big hole in the center so that you're still able to see what you're doing. But don't throw away the parts that you cut off just yet because they're going to come in handy when doing the scales on the shoulder. You could use an eyeshadow for the scales, but like I mentioned, my friend Lacey does mermaids on a regular basis when working with Project Mermaids, so she recommended using a cream like this one from Makeup Forever instead to really make the scales pop on the skin. So I'm applying it over the fishnets using the Sigma P88 brush, and I'm just kind of doing a little patting motion over the area where I want the scales to be. Once you're done, pull back the fishnet to just see that you're on the right track. I decided for this look, I really wanted the scales to be on the temples, cheekbones, collarbone, and shoulder. So I'm just pulling the fishnet tight over those areas and packing on that silver cream from the flash palette. One thing I really want to mention is that try and get it right the first time because if you pull back the fishnet and then try going back over it again, you might be going over certain areas that aren't supposed to have product on it and then the scales will kind of just all mush together. So try and do it the first time and not go over it anymore after you've pulled off the fishnet from that area. Using the leg portion of the fishnet that we cut off, I'm going to pull my arm through it and then start applying scales to my shoulder and collarbones. I thought that this really made the look and it just gave a really cool effect rather than just having scales on the face. To put the final touches on this look, I applied a pair of false lashes. I'm using the Flutter Dimensional Lashes, and I wish I knew the name, but I threw away the box that had the name on it. And I was originally going to apply these really crazy lashes that almost looked like gills, but they kept falling off, so I decided not to use them. For the lips, I mixed together two NYX Macaroon Lippies in Scandalous and Stone Cold. Apply the green one first, and then finish it off with the silver one to add a really nice sheen. And finally, I'm just going to add Makeup Geek's gel liner in Mystic to my waterline using Smith Brush 212. And you're done. I wish I could tell you guys I did something crazy with my hair to get it to look like this, but this is my natural hair texture, so all I did was take it out of the clip and toss it around. As mentioned in the intro, I did draw a lot of my inspiration from my friend Lacey's work on the Project Mermaids website, so I'll definitely make sure to include all the information down below in the description box. Plus, it's for a really good cause, so you guys should definitely check it out. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye, guys.